Hello, this is question one from paper two from the 2020 ordinary level leave insert maths exam. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a playlist that has all my solutions to the questions that's in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question. So you can try it in your own time. This question is a lot of English, but it's about counting and a little bit of probability. The first part of the question tells us about a restaurant that has three different options. It has like um, a starter, a main, and a dessert. And there's four starters, six mains, and eight different desserts. How many different meals can I have? And there's a lot of options there. Here's how I like to do these questions. I like to write a little, just a box. This is for starters, for a main, and for a dessert. Now, uh, how many, the different options. I, I'm gonna give a simpler example now in a minute, I think. There's four here, I'll just put these numbers in first. Four starters, six mains, and eight desserts. Let's do a very simple example. You know, actually, I don't really wanna get into teaching this. That should be in another video or another topic. This should be just the exams. You know what, I'll do it anyway, because uh, I think it's important. Um, because I'm gonna tell you to multiply all these, but why? Um, think of a simpler example. Think of um, my outfit for the day. I have uh, a choice for trousers, a tr choice for a jumper. Let's say I have only two trousers and three jumpers. And we call the trousers uh, one and two, and the jumpers A, B, and C. What can I wear? I can wear one and A, I can wear one and B, I can wear one and C. I can wear 2A and 2B and 2C. There's six different choices. Two multiplied by three. That'll help you sort of get a bit more of an understanding maybe. I could even add in hats, let's say. I have two different hats I could wear. We call them P and Q. And let's see, I could be wearing all these with P. But then I could do the same again. 1A, 2A with Q and so on and so on. There, how many now is there? There's six and another six, there's 12. Again, two multiplied by three multiplied by two. You can test that out with a few different numbers, uh, smaller numbers, and get a, get a feeling for why this works perhaps. Now in this case, if you multiply these three numbers, we will get a hundred and um, 192. So you can't really write out every one of them, I'm, I'm afraid. So you, you have to accept that we can multiply. I anyway, mean, that's the answer to that part, uh, 192. We just multiply those three numbers. Now, part two is interesting. It says, I think, it's, yeah, Jack visits this uh, restaurant one day, and they still have four starters. They still have six mains, but they've sold out of some of the desserts. And the total choice he has is 120. Now, this is a, an important question because ones like this happen all the time. They give you an easy question, and I'd say two, three times every exam this happens. They give you an easy question, and then they give you a similar question with a bit of information missing, but they give you the answer. So how do you deal with this? Do it the same way you did this. You multiplied four by six by eight. Well, multiply four by six by, let's put an X there. Any letter you want is fine, but let's put an X there. Let's multiply all these out. Four multiplied by six is, uh, I should have been able to do that in my head, 24. 24 multiplied by x, well, we'll write that 24x. And we know the answer is equal to 120. So I've gone and turned English into a, a, a maths question, an algebra question. And that's very important uh, skill to have for these exams. Be able to read the English and turn it into a line of mathematics. So in this case, 24x equals 120. Let's do maths then. Move the 24. Uh, divide both sides by 24. We get 120 divided by 24. Put that into a calculator, we get 5. And that makes sense to us. There was some missing. There was 8. There's some missing. 5. Okay. Well, so there's 5 desserts. That's what they asked, didn't they? Um, yeah, they did. Okay. I was worried they might have asked how many are missing. All right, let's move on to part B. It's, yeah, it's completely different. So I'll rub this out first and we'll do part B. Okay, in part B, they tell us in a large population, one in every eight people play tennis. Um, four people are chosen at random from the population. What is the probability that the fourth person is the only one that plays tennis? A few things to talk about here. 
uh, the word large population may, may confuse some people. That's only there to be technically correct. They're a little worried some smart arse might come along and say, oh, you know what, if it's a small population, this question won't work this way. That's all, you don't need to worry about that one. Uh, basically, if we took one person out of the population, if it's large enough, it won't change. If there's a million people and we take one person out, well, there's still about a million people, um, even though there's one less. Whereas if it's only 10 people, if we took one out, well, nine is quite different than 10. Whereas 999,000 and 999,999 is not much different than a million. Okay, that's that first bit. Right, uh, four people are chosen at random. Let's write, let's draw four boxes again. I often do this. Four people are chosen at random. The probability that the fourth person is the only one that plays tennis. So this again, this is a question about reading English properly. Uh, because if they're the only one that plays tennis, that means this person does not play tennis, does not play tennis, does not play tennis, and plays tennis. Uh, just not tennis and tennis. All right, that's... So what's the probabilities of each of these? Um, the probability of not playing tennis. They didn't tell us, but... Think for it, 7 out of 8. If 1 out of 8 plays tennis, well, not plays tennis must be 7 out of 8. Must be 7 out of 8 again, and 7 out of 8. This number would change in a small population, by the way. Uh, and a po uh, the probability of playing tennis, well, that's 1 out of 8. What's the probability of all of these things happening? It's just like from the first part, we multiply these. Um, put this all in a calculator, we can multiply this out, we'll just get seven by seven by seven, we'll get three of them, and on the bottom row we'll get eight by eight by eight, uh, there's four of those eights. A calculator will do uh, this for us, this will come out as 343 divided by 4096, which is the same as 0 0.0837, which is also the same as 8.37%. Um, I guess, it, I, it doesn't ask us, I don't think, um, it doesn't ask us how they want it written. I, I'd leave it as this, because it's exactly right. Um, you might want to leave it like this, but I have to round off a few numbers, or you might leave it like this. Again, I have to round off a few numbers. But all of these will be full marks in the exam, if, if I haven't made a mistake, that is. All right, and uh, the very last part then, they say three, three, three people are chosen at randomly, at random, let me start again. Three people are chosen at random from the population. What's the probability that exactly two of them play tennis? Now, this is a much harder question. It doesn't seem much different, but it's much harder. And I'll try and explain why. Because here's, here's an example. How about I pick the first person and they don't play tennis? Second person, they pick, they play tennis. And, well, let me read the question a bit. Two play tennis, okay. And the third person plays tennis. So this is what they asked for. Exactly two people play tennis. Um, and we can work out the odds of this the same way we did there. But here's the problem. There's another thing that can happen. We could have picked a, a tennis player, a not tennis player, and a tennis player. Or we could have picked a tennis player, a tennis player, and a not tennis player. Obviously, we could have picked other things as well. Um, not, not, not. Yes, yes. But these, these are the only ones that have exactly two. But what's important to know is, is there's more than one way to get exactly two. That's what I'm really trying to say here. There's more than one way to get exactly two. There's three ways. So we'd have to work out the probability of each of these. Well, they're all the same. Um, I'll show that, and then we add them together. Or we multiply one by three, because they're all the same. So let's work out the probability of uh, any one of these now. Um, we'll hopefully show they're the same. Not tennis is a seven over eight. Tennis is one over eight, and tennis is one over eight. Uh, this guy would have been just one over eight, seven over eight, and one over eight. It would work out the same. When we multiply this all together, we just get seven on the top, and the, tr uh, the multiply the whole bottom here, we get 512. Uh, yeah, 512. And we would have got the same answer for any of these. So it's just we need three of these. Our total answer, we need to multiply this by three. And uh, well, that's it pretty much. This would be equal to 21 divided by 512. That's fine as the answer. 
or you could um, write that as 0 0.041 or you could write that as 4.1%. Uh, do they ask, um, no, they don't ask any which type. And that's it, let me, let me talk a little more about this number three because the exam might not be as nice to you that you could count them all yourself. Because another way to write this is I chose two people out of three to be exactly right. Because So they could have asked something like, um, how about we picked 20 people? What's the probability of exactly five of them playing tennis? Well, we can't count that up. It's too, it's too big of a number. We'd have to use our maths. This is on a calculator, by the way, this C button. We could pick, um, let's see, five people out of 20. Instead of being three in this simple case, um, this would be, and this is where we can't do it, it's 15,504. Now, the exam would never ask something that big, but they might ask uh, five, choose two, which again is getting bigger. You don't want to be counting that yourself. Um, it should work out the same though. We just have this number. And then we need to work out the probability uh, with 20 of these boxes. That sounds hard, but it's not really. There's 20 of these boxes. Five of them would have one over eight. Five of them would be one over eight, and 15 of them would be seven over eight. Uh, yeah, fifth, um, 15 of them. Nobody asked this, by the way. I'm just trying to show you an example. This, you can do this. This just goes into a calculator. This just goes into a calculator. We found this by a calculator. Multiply them all together. I've, I've done it here for you. It works out at 6%. It's actually more likely this uh, than than this one. Um, yeah, that's okay. Hopefully that answers uh, your question. I, I did more than I need to do there, I think. And um, if you do have any questions, follow on from this. Or if you see any mistakes I made, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.